These sediment filters will last as long as they do. When they get dirty, you got to change them. Now the pleated filters that this unit comes with can be washed off. You can soak them in some soapy water and, and spray them off with a hose. Uh, you can clean them out that way. Uh, the spun sediment filters, if you upgrade to a spun sediment filter, you have to replace. And the carbon filter is good for uh, approximately 2,500 gallons of RO water production uh, or once a year. Change them once a year. And the membranes last as long as they do, in a sense. When your RO production slows down or if the TDS creeps up, it's time to replace the membrane. And it's going to be different based on what kind of feed water is going into this unit. Dirtier feed water taxes the filters harder. Cleaner feed water um, is gentler on them and they can last a lot longer. So the first step is to depressurize the RO unit. And to do that, we're going to turn the incoming water pressure off. Make sure the valve is closed. We're going to open the flush valve, which will depressurize the membrane side of things. And if you have this unit connected to a float valve and the tank is full, the RO line will be pressurized. And what you do is just uh, press the float valve down to relieve the pressure. Alternatively, you could disconnect the tube as well. So now this unit is completely depressurized and ready for a filter change. I'm going to unhook it so I can spin it around and show it to you. To change the filters on a 400, you simply use the included uh, filter wrench and turn the filters counterclockwise, break them loose from their seat, and just spin them off. And then pull the old filters out, clean the sediment or discard, and discard the carbon filter. You'll want to pour all the water out of the filter housings. If they're dirty or yellowed from use, simply use some soapy water uh, and uh, clean them out, wipe them out. If the O-ring is dirty, you can pull it out and clean that out too. Take some silicone grease, food grade stuff, and lubricate that O-ring really good. And this is going to make it easier to take the filters off in the future. After they've been filtering water and they're scaly and crusty, um, they can become kind of welded to each other. And if we lubricate these O-rings, they're going to come off real easy. You want to do this on every filter change. <clears throat> this unit comes with a pleated sediment filter, a KDF uh, carbon, which is highly activated catalytic carbon with a bed of KDF 85 at the bottom and two GXM 200 membranes. If you have a 300, it comes with two GXM 150 HR membranes. This is a 400, so we need two membranes for it. Uh, we're going to put the sediment filter back in its housing and simply spin it on. We're going to put, uh, this is a new carbon, but I'm going to put it back in. You would place your new carbon in this housing and simply spin it on as well really quite simple. Now don't use the filter wrench to tighten these. Tighten them by hand. Unless you don't have the strength, then you can use the filter wrench, but don't over torque these. Just a little bit, a half, I'm sorry, a tenth of a turn past just barely tight. Just a little bit. If you, if you torque them too much, they're going to be impossible to get off later. And that's it for changing the pre-filters. Let's move on to the membrane. To replace the membranes on this unit, we need to disconnect the feed tubes that feed the membranes. And they can just hang there. And all we have to do is spin these two membrane caps off counterclockwise. Now, if this unit's been running for a while, these could feel kind of welded on too. Uh, so one thing we use for that we've mentioned many times before is this handy uh, union wrench or oil filter wrench. You can get these at Harbor Freight uh, and these are really handy. You can 
put it on the filter housing, hold the opposite end and just spin it. These are loose because it's a brand new unit. I'm going to take a pair of pliers. I'm going to grab the core tube right here and just gently pull, twist, and the membrane is going to come right out. Like so. Now these are new membranes, so I'm going to put them back in. Uh, but to, when we want to make sure we do is take up more of our silicone grease, put a little bit on the core tube O-rings there on the membrane, and put a little more on the brine seal here. There's an arrow on the membrane which shows the direction of flow, and that's the direction that you insert it. And the brine seal is always the last to go in when you replace a membrane. So you can see it's the last to go in the housing and that's the direction it should go in. And just push it all the way in past the O-rings. And the same with this one. Seat it all the way in. And then we're going to spin back on our membrane housing caps and just hand tight. And if I want, again these are new, I can put a little bit of silicone grease on this o-ring here as well. And spin it on there. And then I just hook up membrane feed tubes once again and we're good to go. All these filters have been changed. Now before I put this back into service I'm going to flush out this carbon filter if it's a KDF carbon filter which this one is uh, and you can refer back to the uh, earlier video in this set uh, of how to flush a KDF carbon filter. Keep the Warning label on to remind anyone who's going to change this carbon filter that it needs to be flushed. Carbon filters are dusty. We don't want to pump all that fr dust into a fresh membrane. So flush out the carbon filters. Uh, and then remember to flush the membranes out again, which means starting the filter up in flush mode and let it run for about half an hour to an hour and purge out all the stored solution that's in the membranes. And then uh, close the flush valve back to normal operation and you're up and running again. Real simple.